Hi everyone, it's Jeff from Avada here. Welcome back. This is part 6 of the Building a Website from Scratch with Avada video course. This course is aimed at both beginners and more intermediate users, and in it I'll show you how to use the Avada Website Builder to create a complete website from scratch. If you haven't watched parts 1 through 5, please follow the links below and watch the series from the start. And make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notification of all new videos on our channel. Ok, let's begin. In the last video in the series, we built the shop part of the site. In this video, we will set up the blog. Let's start by having a look at the articles page that the wizard created. I can see it's a similar structure to how the shop page was, in that the initial blog page has three sections using a range of different postcards. If I go into a specific post, it's using a layout here, and there's quite a bit going on. There's a page title bar layout section at the top, and then a content layout section that has three columns. The one on the left is displaying post meta, author and social sharing content, and the column in the middle has an image element pulling the featured image, and then the content element to pull the actual post content. And on the right there's a column with a postcards element pulling some specific posts. Under all that there's a full width column with pagination, a separator element, a comments element, and a related post section at the bottom. If I navigate to an archive by clicking on a category for example, we have another layout with a page title bar and a simple content layout section. The page title bar here in this layout is the same layout section used for the product archives page title bar, which we edited in the previous video, so that's why it's using the same image. Again, a great starting blog layout for a fully featured blog, but I think I want something much simpler. So I will just consider what I need to do here. Firstly, I need some blog content for my site, so I will start by making a few posts with images to display instead of the dummy posts. Then I think I will redo the blog page and set it up much like the shop page, with a header and a simple postcards grid displaying the posts. The single post layout is pretty good, so I can just customize that. And I want the archives layout to be very similar to the main blog layout. Ok, to start I need some posts. So if I head to the posts page, we can see all the dummy posts the wizard created. Just like the shop page, I'm going to select and delete all these, and then go to categories, and do the same there. And then I'll just create one new category. I'll call that design, and I'll add the slug, and then I will save it. And now I can add some posts. These will be very simple posts with a title and a couple of text block elements with an image element in between. I'll also add a featured image to be pulled in the layout. Remember here it's a layout that's controlling the design on individual blog posts, and the content itself is being pulled by the content element. You can of course also use the WordPress block editor to make your posts if you prefer. In any case, I'll just make a few posts and come back. Ok, so I have four posts to work with for my design. I also need a new postcard to display these posts with, so I'll move to the library and build a new one. I'll just choose postcard as the library element type, and I will call this one articles. I'll just go to the library and check Avada Studio. If I filter to blog, I can see one here that I like the look of. I'll just import that. The postcard looks like it's using new colours here, but they are in fact pulling from my global colours, it's just that they have a luminance shift applied to them. I think it looks good, so I'm going to leave it. In fact I'm not going to edit this at all, so I'll just save it as is. Ok, so now on the blog page, I'm going to delete this layout, and design a much simpler one that matches the other pages. To start with I'll add my banner. I have one saved in the library, so I'll add a container and head to the library tab. I just need to rename the title to Articles. And I need to change the background image. I'll just head to the background tab, and remove this one, and find my new image and add it in. So now I need to make a new container to hold my posts. I'll just add a 1 1 container here below this. And I'll quickly edit it, call it Posts, and add some padding top and bottom. Now I'm going to use a postcards element to display the posts. There are many methods to display blog posts, including using the blog element, but by far the most flexible and up-to-date method is to use postcards. If you don't know how to use them yet, check out the link below, they give ultimate design freedom. 
Okay, so I will select my new postcard called Articles, and here are my posts. I'll just go to the Design tab and change my number of columns to 2 to match my shop grid. Okay, that's all I have to do with this page, so I will save this. Next is the single post. If I go to the Articles page and pull up a post, I can see a few things I want to change on this. So if I go to Edit Live, I can see the two relevant layout sections here, the blog title bar and the blog single post content section. I'll just control click and edit both of them. And let's start with the page title bar. OK, let's customize this. The quickest way to do this is probably just to delete this container and add a new one and go to the Library tab and add my saved one here. So now I'll change the title to be Dynamic Data and set it to Title. I'll add a text block element below this and set the content to be Dynamic Data again. And this time I want Date. The first date in the Dynamic Options is the date the post is published, which is what I want. Then I'll just center this and on the Design tab I'll set the font color to white and then I'll drag it up above the title. Finally I'll edit the container and go to the background image and remove that and set my sofa image. OK, let's save that. And now we can move to the content layout section. To start with I will edit this container and give it some padding. 100 pixels top and bottom should do it. And I think I'll delete this third column over here and then change the main column to three quarters and the first column to one quarter. OK, in this first column we have a meta element that is looking like a button here. I'm not going to change that, but underneath this I will add a title element. I'll call it Author and change it to a H5. Under this there is a nested column with an image and a text block, but I think I'd prefer to display this differently. So I'll delete the nested column, duplicate my title, change the title to be Dynamic Data and find Author Name, and then on the Design tab set the subheadings Typography Set and tweak the margins to 0 pixels top and 20 pixels bottom. Yeah, that looks a bit cleaner to me. Finally, for the share title, I'll just set that to H5 to match the other one. OK, awesome. The right column is good, so let's scroll down a bit. Under this is another container with pagination comments and recent posts. I think I can simplify this by taking the separator, the comments title, and the comments element up into the main content column. And then I'll just delete that bottom container, ditching the pagination and the recent posts. OK, all done with the single post template. Let's save that one as well. Now if I just come back to my post and refresh, let's see what this looks like on the front end. Yeah, that looks good to me. Now to the archive layout. I'll just click on the design category link here to load an archive page. And here's the archive layout. As we can see, it's using the same page title bar layout section as the shop. So we're going to have to change that. I'll just head to the Layouts page. Here in the Blog Archive Layout, I'll disconnect the Archive Title Bar Layout section and add a new one. I'll call this Blog Archive PTB and click on Create New Section. And now I'll edit it. I'll add a container and insert my saved page title bar from the library. And here I will just set the title element to display dynamic data and choose Title. And I might add some before text to the dynamic data that will show up before the category name on the front end. And again, I'll change the background image to be the sofa. OK, let's save that. OK, so now let's go back to Layouts and edit the Content Layout section. I'll start by editing this container and on the Design tab adding some top and bottom padding. I'll edit the Postcards Archive element and change the postcard to our Articles postcard for the design. And again, on the Design tab, just change the columns to 2. OK, let's save that one as well. We're almost done here. The last thing I want to do is to add a blog section to the home page like I did with the products. So I'll just head to the home page in the Live Builder and come down to the bottom. OK, I want to add a Latest article section here, but I think it might be quicker to copy something than to build it from scratch. I think the Customer Reviews section will actually work here, so I'll copy that and paste it in after the Our Products section. 
I'll just edit that container and call it Latest Articles, and then head to the Background tab, and change the background color to color 7, and change the top title to Latest Articles, and set it to color 1. And I'll also change the text block element to color 1. I'll edit the button to say Read All Articles, and I'll set the link to point to the Articles page. On the right, I'll delete all these small columns and add a two-thirds one. And in that, I'll add a postcards element. Now for a postcard. I want a pretty simple one here. I think one of these starter postcards might actually work okay. I'll select starter blog postcard 2255. Yeah, no cookie. But if I change the number of posts to three here, and set pagination to no pagination, and then on the design tab set the number of columns back to three, we're pretty close. My two titles in the postcard are the wrong color, but they are in fact both links. So if I go to the container they are in, and the design tab, I can just set the container link color here to color one. This just applies to this container, and they are the only links. So I don't see any problem here. Okay, it probably would have been just as quick to build that one from scratch after all. In any case, let's save this, and come to the front end. And now we can check all we have done with the blog elements of this site. Okay, let's start at the bottom and look at our blog section. Yeah, that looks fine, and we'll just show the latest three posts. So now I'll go to the articles page. We have the header and a simple grid here, and this also looks good. So now let's go into an individual article. I'll just scroll down and check that. Yeah, that also looks good. So finally, let's go into an archive page by scrolling back up and clicking on a category. And yes, our header is working and that page looks good as well. Okay, all done for the blog. In the next video, we're going to work on the contact page and create some of our forms for users to contact us through. Okay, I hope to see you there. Okay, this concludes part 6 of our video course on building a website from scratch with Avada. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos, and if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.